Welcome back to Football Daily, where there's not long left, guys, so we've got to talk about some transfer rumours. That's right, today I have found the 15 hottest transfer rumours from the Premier League. There's a couple in there from Europe as well. Most of them are from suggestions you guys sent in on Twitter. I'm then going to be putting those suggestions and those transfers into five different categories that I've come up with today. As you can see in front of me, we've got top signing, good move, what I'm intrigued by, underwhelmed, underwhelming, and what the f***. Where's that come from? Up first, we've got Pedro Porro, Sporting CP's right wing back. It does finally look like Antonio Conte is going to get his number one target in that role. It looks like Jed Spence is going to be sent out on loan. We'll come to him later on in this show. But if he does get Pedro Porro, I think it is a top signing. But there are a few caveats. Clearly a great age, 23 years old. He's chucked up 11 assists so far this season. And I think it's a good time for Sporting to sell. Let's be real. They're not in the Liga Nosh title race. They're 12 points off it at the moment, aren't they? And you can tell how effective he is in attacking positions. We've spoken about his output in those forward areas. When he's playing extremely high, and extremely wide, he's super effective. And that is what Antonio Conte classically likes from his wingbacks, where a lot of the creativity comes from and one of the reasons that Tottenham have struggled this season. But I still think there are some drawbacks to this move. Like I was tempted to put it more in good move than top signing because... It is still a risk to spend 45 million euros on a wing back, as good as he is, when your manager is not committing to a long-term deal. If Antonio Conte decides he's leaving in the summer, we've spoken about this in the past, what happens if the next manager that comes in wants to play a fat back four and Pedro Porro don't fit? It's not great, but I'm just pretending that Antonio Conte is going to sign this new deal. I don't think he will do. If that happens, Pedro Porro... He is a top signing. Next up, we've got one that, for me, is super intriguing. And it's Amadou Haidara to Brighton. Where has this come from? Now, of course, this was a player that Manchester United were interested in under Ralph Rangnick, wasn't it? He has reportedly got a release clause of £30 million that becomes active in the summer. So, you know, Leipzig being in the position they are, I think they're just four points off the top of the Bundesliga, are obviously reticent to sell a player that is pretty vital to them, despite the fact this season he hasn't played an awful lot of minutes. They still rate this player extremely highly, and I think they think he can have impacts off the bench, because right now he's not a starter in that Leipzig side. And the majority of the problem there comes from two major knee problems. He's done his ACL and he's done his MCL. And he's only 24 years old. That is not great. And the amount of football he's played in his professional career is still quite low. If you look at his starts in the Bundesliga since he's been at Leipzig, you know, 4, 5, then 21, 15. Again, this season, just 4. So not huge minutes. The reason I'm so intrigued by this move, though, is because it's Brighton. And their recruitment staff are usually spot on. They don't get many transfers wrong. Brighton and if they seen value in Hydara in January then it's super interesting I don't think this is a move that's going to happen I think Leipzig will hold off and somebody will pay that release clause in the summer but nevertheless Brighton going for Hydara it is the English Super League now while Brighton are potentially bringing a player in they might also be letting a player go and that's Tariq Lamptey now interestingly this one looks like it's going to revolve around Pedro Porro potentially leaving Sporting because they are extremely interested, according to David Ornstein, there's the tweet, in Tari Clampty, who's still just 22 years of age. But he started just one Premier League game this season. What has happened there? So intriguing, this potential move. Tariq Clampty going out to Portugal. The injuries in 2021, 2020, 2021 season, I should say, have just really stunted his career so far. I mean, you can see here the hamstring problems that plagued him in that season. The first 13 days, then 70, then 196 days. He had those terrible problems with his hamstrings. But he is still a really talented player. And I would be excited to see him relaunch his career at a club like Sporting, where, you know, Ruben Amarim classically has got an awful lot of output out of wingbacks, as we've seen 
with Pedro Porro, who's put up 11 assists, and we saw his attacking output earlier. It'd be really, really fun to watch Tariq Lamptey under Amarin in Liga Nosh. Let's have it absolutely right, so this is definitely a move that intrigues me. Next up, we've got Anthony Gordon to Newcastle for a reported £40 million, which is an awful lot of money. Now, I'm shooting this on Thursday, and so far, for the last three days, Anthony Gordon has missed training every day. Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of this, uh, especially when it's at your boyhood club who are battling relegation. I feel like even if you are going to get this move to a step up side, like it would be with Newcastle, should still be putting absolutely everything in to the cause to keep that boyhood club in the division. Just my opinion. And I'm also pretty underwhelmed by this move. I think it's an awful lot of money. There's definitely talent there with Anthony Gordon, but his output... It hasn't blown me away so far. Now, he is only 21 years old, so let's not get carried away. But, you know, last season, 35 games played, four goals, two assists. This season, 16 games played, three goals. His expected assist numbers are at about 0 0.05 for Everton this season. Not exceptional. You can see why Newcastle won him, and it's this area here. Because they are the hardest working defensive unit in the league. You can see what Eddie Howe has taken from Diego Simeone. You can see where Anthony Gordon is going to slot straight into that side. But I was kind of expecting that they would go for someone that was going to take them to the next level. Or progress them a little bit in attacking areas. And that's not necessarily where Anthony Gordon thrives. For £40 million, I think it's quite a lot of money. I really do. But... Remains to be seen, you know, Eddie Howe is getting amazing output out of, you know, some mid players at the moment. So Anthony Gordon might improve rapidly under his coaching. If he joins, there are rumours that Alan San Maximan will be let go. Now, of course, San Maximan come back for his injury and has struggled to get back into this side. He doesn't really fit with the way Eddie Howe is operating at, at the moment, which is everybody works extremely hard for a defensive cause. That's obviously not Alan San Maximan's game. He is a player that's going to progress you very quickly up the field in counter-attacking situations, but doesn't give you an awful lot of work off the ball and a lot of people predicted this at Football Daily. I have to say a lot of people said when Newcastle go to the next level they might have to leave Alan Sam Maximan behind just because when you move to that next level you have to play as much more of a unit and Alan Sam Maximan is a superb individual. I think the move to AC Milan though super intriguing. He's going to have to play off that right you'd think because there's no way he's going to replace Rafa Leao on the left hand side and they are looking for an upgrade to Messias out there aren't they? It would be fun. It would be an interesting watch to see what a total dribble monster like Alan San Maximan can do out in Italy. But I don't think that Eddie Howe will sanction this move. Even if they get Anthony Gordon over the line, I think because they're so close to getting into the Champions League this season, he's better to have every weapon available. You know, it is a nice option, isn't it, if they are losing 1-0 or 2-1 to bring Alan San Maximan off the bench and just create chaos in forward areas, drive the team up the pitch. So I would personally keep Sam Maximan. And if I was an AC Milan fan, I would be a little bit underwhelmed. But for me personally, it's intriguing. So I'm leaving him in that category. Okay, the next one is Hakim Ziyech, who's reportedly in talks with Everton over a £20 million move. Of course, the 29-year-old is out of favour at Chelsea. And for me, this is definitely the first what the fuck transfer. Who is sanctioning this? I quite like Hakim Ziyech as a player, even though he hasn't performed that well at Chelsea recently. But £20 million, he's only over £200,000 a week. And the biggest reason this is in the WTF column is they haven't got a manager. What if the next manager comes in and doesn't fancy Hakim Ziyech? If Dutch comes in and wants somebody who is aggressive, fast, you know, superb defensively. It's not Hakim Ziyech. I don't get this move at all. It's signing a player when you haven't got a manager in charge. What the f***, man? Okay, let's go to another WTF transfer, 100%. Zaniolo to Bournemouth. Yes, let's just all think about this and process it. The English Super League is in full effect. Zaniolo to Bournemouth. Now, Bournemouth are said to have agreed a €30 million Euro fee with Roma. Zaniolo himself, unsurprisingly, isn't particularly keen on the move because AC Milan are also interested in the player. I think they've bid a lot less, somewhere between 15 and €20 million. Euros. 
He has agreed personal terms uh, with AC Milan, according to Fabrizio. I'll chuck that tweet up on screen as well. But if this happens, I would be astonished. I can't see it. You know, this is a player that Fabio Capello, not three years ago, was tipping for a Ballon d'Or. You know, Capello, calm down. The issue for Zaniolo, of course, comes back to the fact that he snapped both ACLs within the course of a year didn't he, between 2020-2021 after that amazing breakthrough under Di Francesco. So I think personally he would be very silly to go to Bournemouth. Last season put up the most minutes of any season in his professional career. Try and regain form at AC Milan because his output last season, not spectacular. I think to go to Bournemouth now would be... Honestly, crazy. The next one we are looking at is Caicedo to Arsenal. Now, these rumours really started to bubble this week after Mikel Arteta said this. Do you feel like you've got enough in midfield or do you think you'll need to bring someone else in? Well, we need some more cover in midfield, ideally, if, if we can. But uh, obviously, in this market, it's, it's pretty complicated to do that. Because of this... The Telegraph and plenty of others talking about Caicedo potentially being an option for the club at £80 million. Now, I really like Caicedo, but I do think for Arsenal, they're better off signing a shorter term target that can carry them through to a title charge and focusing that money on Declan Rice. I don't see them being able to get Caicedo at close to, you know, 80 to 100, whatever it is that Brighton want nowadays, and Declan Rice for 80 to 100 in the summer. I think... For me, Declan Rice is the better player. I think he fits this Arsenal project perfectly with his leadership values. And, you know, the head-to-head, -head, again, I'm going to throw it up on screen now, that I saw recently on Who Scored, kind of backs up a lot of my point. I like Caicedo, but I do think you have to be careful taking players at Brighton because the system is so perfect. And De Zerbi is getting the maximum out of all of this level of talent. I think Caicedo will take a step up, but I don't think he should be doing it in... January, I think he should stick with De Zerbi and keep learning his football there. And I think Arsenal should go for Declan Rice. It would be a good move. Let, let's, let's, if it happened, it would be a good move. But it would be a, a bad move if it meant no Rice. So I'm leaving it there, but I hope that makes sense. Next one I just cannot understand. Jack Harrison to Leicester for £25 million. I mean, for me, this is going in WTF because... Why a lead selling an asset or thinking about selling an asset like Jack Harrison, who started, what, 15 Premier League games for them this season, to Leicester, who they're not exactly relegation rivals, but it would certainly weaken their own squad and strengthen a rival to some level. Because I do think Jack Harrison is a really good player. He's put up four assists this season. And yes, he's probably been usurped by Wilfred Nyonto in that side, but he's extremely hardworking. And there's certainly a high level of talent. I think this would be a totally bizarre move. Even if he's not a starter anymore and Yonto is that guy who's going to carry them forward, surely it's better to have him as part of the squad and, let's, and look to move him on in the summer. Leeds are absolutely in a relegation battle. I don't think they can afford to be letting anyone go right now. Whilst we're on the topic of Leeds, we should cover Weston McKenney, who's potentially joining the club. Uh... Talks are ongoing here. I think I saw somebody tweet that personal terms have been agreed between Weston McKenney and Leeds after a phone call with Jesse Marsh and talking to Tyler Adams. However, it seems like the fee is a bit of a sticking point. I think Leeds are about 20 million and Juventus won about 30 million, which seems quite a lot of money. I think it would be a good move for about 20 million euros because I do think it would be a coup for Leeds, a relegation battling side, to sign Weston McKenney off of Juventus, who have, of course, been deducted those points. Again, a slight example of the English Super League going on right here. I think he would improve the Leeds midfield as well and certainly offer a different dimension and definite depth to the team. My issue here is that this is a real backing of Jesse Marsh. Like, it's if you give him Weston McKenney as well, it's huge backing for his system and it's a system that's not won in the Premier League since November the 5th. Like, I, I think Leeds will stay up if they keep Jesse Marsh. And the underlying numbers are sort of mid-table. But they haven't won in the Premier League since November the 5th. And if you end up spending 50 million, 60 million, 70 million in this January window, you know, Werber's already come in, Rutter's already come in, Weston McKenney comes in as well. I think that is serious backing for Jesse Marsh. Like, you are then saying we're keeping this coach in charge, um, which is fine. And it probably keeps in the division, but I don't know how happy Leeds fans are going to be about that. 
We'll fly through the next rumour. It's quite interesting though. Mateus Nunes to Chelsea. Now, we're going to stick on the topic of Chelsea. We've got two midfielders to do. Mateus Nunes, who, of course, came in for £42 million to Wolves in the summer uh, just six months ago. He's already been linked with X6 to Liverpool and to Chelsea, which is slightly bizarre given he's been there such a short period of time. Wicked ball carrier. Amazing dribbler and progresses the ball up the field. Lovely with his feet. Not such a good passer as he is a dribbler, but you know, it would be a good move. Chelsea need midfielders. For the right fee. I haven't seen any fees tabled here. If we're talking 80 million, then I don't think so. But fine. The next one, though, I would be underwhelmed about it. Like, Amadou Onana is playing well for Everton. And, you know, he's definitely got the physicality to rock it in the Prem. And his passing numbers are pretty impressive. But they only bought him in for £33 million in the summer, Everton. And I think Chelsea can aim slightly higher here. I think Chelsea... Having outlaid so much money, what's an extra 40 million on top of 30 million? You know, if they're going to have to spend 50 million to get Onana out of the club, I think they may as well hold that money and look to invest it in the summer in a different player. Like, Onana is fine, but I don't think he takes Chelsea's midfield to the next level. And they, right now, aren't getting in the Champions League anyway. Are they 10th? For me, this would be a bit of a bizarre situation taking Everton central midfielder off them. Everton are going to want a huge fee because he is probably their best central midfielder and also they're in a relegation battle. So if you end up spending 60, 70 million on Onana because he only came in the summer of 33, I don't get it. Nottingham Forest signing Kaylor Navas, are they? What? The English Super League tax, to be fair, he is 36 years old now, isn't he? I can't see this one happening. I know Dean Henderson's out for a month or so, but I would be really surprised if they can get Kaylor Navas in as short-term cover. 36, I think he hasn't started a game in Ligue 1 this season. Is it just two appearances in the Coupe de France? Uh, I, I, if he's going to go, I think I can imagine him going to the MLS or you know potentially out to Saudi Arabia. I don't think Knott's Forest are going to be able to pick him up on a six-month loan deal. Jed Spence is up next, and the latest rumour with Jed Spence is that Brentford are interested in taking him on loan. Of course, he's going to be allowed to leave on loan now that Pedro Porro looks like he's coming through the door. I love the idea of Jed Spence at Brentford. I think this will be really fun. We've seen Thomas Frank switch between a back four and a back five this season. When he's played the back five, at times he's used Rusilev on that right wing-back role. I think Jed Spence will be an upgrade there, particularly in attacking areas. You know, Rusilev, I think, across his Brentford career has put up four assists. Jed Spence, I could see putting that up in half a season, honestly. I think he's a massively underrated player, Jed Spence. And Brentford right now are one of the most exciting projects in English football. Thomas Frank is an unbelievable coach. It'd be great to see Jed Spence learning in that environment. I think the original bid for him, though, they wanted an option to buy because Brentford classically do not do loan moves. It would be really surprising to see them actually complete a loan move. It's not really how they operate as a club. I think this would only happen if they got an option to buy. And I don't think Tottenham would be willing to do that. But let's have it right. If he went to Brentford, I think this would be a top signing. Seriously. Final one is Harry Kane to Bayern Munich. Now, obviously, this would be a top signing. But I want to caveat this with a clip I saw on Sky Germany earlier in the week. I had a call about Harry Kane a few hours ago. And I can say he's still on the list. For sure, we said that in the summer it was very hot. He is still on the list, but now we hear it's cold. The chances to get him in summer are very, very slim. And the Bayern bosses are not very optimistic at this stage to get to sign him in summer, but they have been in contact. We have reported about it. Kane was open to join Bayern to make that step in the Bundesliga to Bayern Munich. Bayern don't give up the hope to sign Harry Kane for the next summer, but he's too expensive for Bayern Munich at this stage. The total package of salary fee and transfer fee is not a package Bayern can pay right now. I can see totally why Bayern Munich are feeling less and less confident about getting this deal over the line as well. Personally, I think he's definitely going to stay in the Premier League. It'll either be a new contract at Tottenham or he'll sign for Manchester United. I think it's that simple. I don't think City are going to be interested in him. I don't think Liverpool are going to be interested in him. I think it'll be Manchester United offering big bucks or a new contract at Tottenham. He wants the Premier League goalscoring record above playing abroad and winning the Bundesliga title. You might disagree with that, but clearly that's where Harry Kane's head's at for me. 
I think he'll end up running out at Old Trafford wearing red next season. That's my personal opinion. But what do you guys at home think? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button, hit subscribe. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. We'll see you later. Auf Wiedersehen.